Good afternoon, everybody. Are you here? So cool. Let me see who's here. Emma, Nathan, Amanda, Cindy. Well, I, I thought Cindy has some house responsibility. Caden, nice. Megan, great. Troy, long time no see. All right, let me see how many students are on board now. Got 12 students, not bad. Hey, this is the last reaction of the semester. I hope you are able to enjoy some, some reaction here. It's dry lab, but I hope it, it, uh, it saves a headache for you to mess up with uh, chemicals, but I think the theory, we really want you to enhance your understanding going through this lab uh, procedures, okay? Do I have everybody on board now? I have 12 students. How's everybody? Hello. Many exams, a lot of deadlines. Life is difficult, huh? Yeah, imagine those instructors. I'm, I'm lucky because my children are your age and they actually they finished school and they're working now. Can you imagine those instructors with small children in the house? I really don't know how they handle their life, okay? Imagine their, their children have their education part that needs to be continued. However, uh, parents will have to help, help them in the, in the school and also take care of them, you know, especially for toddler or small age children. It's really impossible to lecture from home. It's really difficult for instructors, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky because I'm over it. <laughs> okay, so for today, we're going to cover this very, very important aldol condensation reaction. Okay, this is important because it's making a new carbon-carbon bond. So in other words, you give me one molecule, another molecule of different kind, and as long as you, you okay, let me let me open up the chapter. Okay, hold on. Okay, this is the old procedure that you, that we're gonna go by today. The photos will will illustrate. Okay, this reaction. And this is done 10, maybe five to 10 years ago. I don't quite remember. Okay. All right, auto condensation. Are you ready? I think I can get started now. 
How many students are on board? 14, very good. Okay, I'm gonna get started, okay? How many of you actually had this lecture already from Dr. Schenkweiler or was it Dr. Lopez class? Do you, have you have received the education from, yes. Very good, Benjamin, thank you. And I, I'm pretty sure you got some idea already if you have not. No problem, Megan, take a look, okay? I'm showing you, this is the, the reaction that involve in carbonyl group, okay? And then the other molecule right here, in order to proceed with aldocondensation. Carbonyl group is one of the functional group you have to have, okay? The other one is, look at this molecule. Okay, we're using in this experiment, phenyl group and then methyl group on the on two sides, okay? of this carbonyl group. Okay, so I know this is what I want, but on the other molecule, you will have to have alpha hydrogen. Okay, so you know when I give you this alpha, alpha description to label the carbon, I'm telling you this carbon is located right next to the functional group. In this case, I have a ketone, and it is the first carbon next to the carbonyl group, and I call it alpha carbon. And so what do I want to tell you about this alpha hydrogen? Is that this hydrogen here is going to be acidic. Okay, it is going to be acidic. Why is that? I'll give you the mechanism i'll show you why okay okay so besides i need to have a carbonyl group and then i need to have an alpha hydrogen coming from the other molecule then i can proceed this elder uh, aldo condensation and you want to run this reaction under a basic condition a basic condition okay and this is how this first reaction was discovered or invented by the, the scientist. Okay, very important reaction used commonly in the industry to create new molecules, especially, especially when you try to expand the size of molecule by adding more and more carbon. Okay, number one application, number one application, drug molecule. Okay, nowadays you can go to the um, drugstore and you get estrogen, or maybe this is through this, uh, the prescription from doctors, okay? They give you, they prescribe the medication, okay, with, uh, with a trade name, estrogen. And actually this estrogen is coming from the lab, okay? A lot of estrogens actually come from the lab. And that is all coming from molecules, okay, coming together, forming new carbon-carbon bond. And so look at the reactant side relative to the product right here. I'm showing you a product, okay, after this intermediate right here. The end product right here is actually connecting the two reactants. And so let me tell you, this alkyl group, are you following my hand right here on this page, on the screen? Okay, this R group, okay, remains unchanged, but you realize this alpha hydrogen is now linked up to this carbonyl group carbon. Okay, so this phenyl group unchanged, this carbonyl carbon now is connected to this alpha hydrogen from the other molecule. It is not connected through a single bond, it is a double bond created, okay? Okay, 
And you may say, Miss Jane, what happened to this oxygen right here? I can tell you this oxygen actually disappeared in the formation of water. It disappeared on you, okay? So when you do outdoor condensation, you are losing oxygen, okay? You're losing oxygen from the reactant, okay? But you're expanding the molecule by, wow, there's many, many carbons now. Such a important reaction in industry, in pharmaceutical industry, in my goodness, anything artificial, anything artificial, okay? All right, let me block this page. And I want to ask you, okay, on this outdoor condensation, what do you need? You know, I need a carbon new group. Next, I need a alpha alpha carbon and that alpha carbon must have a alpha hydrogen because that alpha hydrogen will do some magic for me and okay bear with me my gardener is cleaning up the backyard you probably hear some noise okay i want to show you it is all because i have this alpha hydrogen right here why is this alpha? It's right next to carbonyl group, okay? It is right next to this carbonyl group, and this hydrogen here is acidic, okay? And I want to show you one more time, okay? Did I say I want this reaction proceed in base? This base will show interest and to take this hydrogen from the alpha position. And I told you this is gonna be acidic, okay? And I'll show you why it is acidic, okay? This hydroxide and the alpha hydrogen produce water in the mechanism. It is real, okay? So ladies and gentlemen, if I say aldo product, okay, now this is the target product. You, you, you know, your, your, the, the, your reaction today, you will produce aldo product but what is the byproduct the byproduct is water okay all because hey the space and then the alpha hydrogen together they create water together and did i tell you many many times and in the ester experiment you also learned if i can create a very stable leaving group in this case water is is a very good leaving group then you're able to drive the reaction to the product side. This is Le Chatelier principle. It's all because the auto reaction itself is reversible, is re uh, reversible, okay? So don't forget, okay? Alpha hydrogen is the starter. Hey, why this reaction will proceed? Because I have this alpha hydrogen capable of forming water with the base with the base added to the reaction mixture, okay? All right. And Nathan, you have a question about, okay, Dr. Shun Guadalupe is always label, yes, always label the alpha carbon. Yes, it is a very special carbon. It's a very special hydrogen. If it is available on the carbon, it will do the magic for you, okay? All right, so one more time. What's important here? Alpha hydrogen is acidic. Alpha hydrogen is acidic. It will be taken away by the base. You will be adding the base to this mixture of reaction and you are able to create new carbon-carbon bond. And this is the beauty of aldo condensation, okay? All right. All right, then. You may say, Miss Jean, right here, I think Nathan is asking me, Miss Jean, I see aldehyde here. Am I able to use a ketone here? Of course, as long as it has a couple new group, okay? It will be a good target for this molecule that contains the alpha hydrogen. I will show you right away. 
in the mechanism, okay? All right, I'm pretty sure I can guarantee this elder condensation will be in your final exam, okay? Either in lecture or in the lab. It's so important and every professor is supposed to give you this education if they teach organic chemistry, okay? All right, now this is the molecule that has alpha hydrogen. It forms water, okay? I'm adding a base. Now tell me, everybody, do you have lab manual with you? Okay. Tell me what kind of base you're adding. Hello? NaOH. Thank you, Cindy. You're so quick. Sodium hydroxide. I, you're wonderful. Tell me, are we adding this sodium hydroxide in the solution form or is in the pellets form, according to the lab manual? Are we providing this in the solution form? That means I pre-dissolve pre the sodium hydroxide in water. Yes, it's solution form. And I think I can tell you, yes, in the lab, we actually provide you the 10% NaOH solution. Okay, that's roughly 2M. And did I say that in the lab manual? In, in my course packet, I, I think I said that, okay? Let me move this away a little bit, okay? The master packet, I have to show you now, okay? What is the page number, hello? Is it page 30 something, 38? Let me try. Oh yeah, I was right. I remember from yesterday, okay? All right, I'm showing you, ladies and gentlemen, we're not using 2M. Uh, sodium hydroxide, okay, we're using the 10%. It's equivalent to 2.5, okay, molarity. And so this is already dissolved in water, okay? I can tell you oftentimes having this water form is not the best, okay? And I want to show you the mechanism one more time, okay? And we'll go through this mechanism together. Okay, you'll be impressed. Okay, well, new carbon carbon bond will be created. Okay, all right, alpha hydrogen, water together, they create water together. Okay, so please remember there is water created right away. Why, okay, why this is being favored? Okay, because water is a great living group. At the same time, there is a wonderful, wonderful resonance structure coming from this abstraction of hydrogen proton. Okay, after this molecule contribute that hydrogen plus, it forms a resonance structure. My goodness, is that a big driving force to the reaction also? Yes, okay. The intermediate is called enolate. Have you learned that term in your life? Enolate, eno, en means E-N-E, -E, means this is a alkene, yeah, it means it's a C-C double bond, okay? And I say eno, no means O-L, O-L is alcohol, yes, 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 okay? I will show you this risen structure with this double bond created Okay, between this carbon and then the carbonyl carbon. Okay, do you see where my arrow is? Okay, between this two carbon, instead of having this single bond, it is resonating with this enolate structure. Okay, the pi bond get pushed away and if it's a wonderful resonance structure. Okay, for this reason, okay, the reaction will even push forward, not because of uh, water formation only, it is the resonance that favors the intermediate to form. Okay, all right. Now we have an enolate. We have a double bond somewhere. And I can tell you this double bond will be a excellent, excellent, and excellent what? Nucleophile. Have you learned that term in your life? 
nucleophile. It's a good nucleophile because I'm electron rich. Okay, I have I have two electron dots right here and the and the pi bond. Okay, so this pi bond will be interested in what? I told you. Aha, uh -huh. this substrate molecule will have to be a carbon neo group. Okay. You can give me aldehyde, you can give me ketone, okay? As long as it is a, a good carbonyl group with this carbon, which is partially positive. Am I right? This is a polar bond. This electron pair is more toward the oxygen side. That makes this carbon right here electron hungry because say hey, most of the electron will be kept by the oxygen it's uneven distribution of the electron density here it's not commonly shared in equal share no it is all i would say most i wouldn't say most i would say most i would not say all okay most of the electron cloud will be close to the oxygen side. And so this is partially positive. And because I have a good nucleophile with extra electron, guess what? They show the natural attraction right away. This is why the aldol condensation is such a successful reaction, okay? It provides chemists one way to design or create new molecules, or to create a whole era of new compound, okay? All right, one more time. Alpha hydrogen will get the reaction started. The enolate resonance and the water leaving group favor the formation of enolate and they become a very good nucleophile attacking the other carbonyl group okay okay so this reaction actually involved two compounds with carbonyl group two compounds with carbonyl group will give you if you put them together the aldo condition will proceed if one of the molecule has alpha hydrogen right okay all right in summary now you see the driving force okay and i want to show you from this attack intermediate transition state compared to another transition state right here do you see there is a water molecule right here nearby where is it from is this falling from the sky no it was created from here, am I right? All right, that water never went away. Never. The water is nearby. Okay, because after the attack, and after this attack, I formed that water. And after this nucleophilic attack, I form a new bond. At the same time, do you see between, are you, please follow my arrow, between this carbon, this carbon, and then the central carbon on the other carbonyl group, between them, there is a new bond right here. Then push this double bond on the carbonyl group this way. You create another oxide right here, okay? So you have enol, then you have alkoxide. Do you know this term called alkoxide? It's alkyl and the oxide, yeah, put in one word. Alkyl, okay, alkyl group coming from here. And oxide, oh my goodness. Miss Jean, you created alkoxide here. You gave me a negative charge. And my goodness, is this something something that is supposed to be really, really different compared to my original carbonyl group? I can tell you, yes, it's a very, very strong base. Okay? Try to understand, there are a lot of exotic intermediate here, okay? The enolate, 
Okay, and then alkoxide is another intermediate. You should know it. Okay, what do I want to say about this alkoxide? If you ask me, machine, what is what's so unique about alkoxide? I can tell you, alkoxide is one of the strongest base on Earth on this planet. Strongest base. Alkoxide is one of the strongest base on Earth. What does it mean? Put the alkoxide in the presence of water together. What's going to happen? This alkoxide will take away the hydrogen from water. Okay, it will turn water into a uh, OH minus. Okay. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to go back here. Do you see equilibrium sign right here? Equilibrium sign here? Equilibrium sign here? Okay, this is all at equilibrium. There is a big driving force, but in between, there is a ratio of concentration that chemists will have to worry about, okay? For you, you just need to know the key feature of the intermediate, okay? Enolate first, resonance, and favor the nucleophilic attack. Next intermediate is to generate the alkoxide. That alkoxide is super, super basic. It will take away the hydrogen from the first water molecule created in this, yes, alpha hydrogen. All right? So tell me, are you supposed to write an OH minus here? Yes. That's the byproduct. That is to tell you, my basic molecule oxide right here is being regenerated here after this alkoxide attack. That OH, for this reason, is actually a catalyst. Am I right? OH hydroxide is a catalyst. Whatever says in the lab manual, okay? If I can tell you, the reaction actually provide the sodium hydroxide in the aqueous form. There's a lot of water molecules already to start out with, okay? So I can tell you there, the, the reaction is, yeah, the yield will not be very impressive, okay? However, we don't want students to handle the sodium hydroxide in pellets in solid form. It's too dangerous. It burns your skin. It attacks your skin. And we don't want you to do that. So we use a diluted form by sacrificing the yield, okay? Because if you have water here, you know the reaction kind of push it backwards, okay? Okay? Remember, this is the same as the, 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 the question I want to, I want all of you to answer in the ester experiment, okay? Why not use vinegar? Why not use acetic acid in aqueous form? Why do you use the acidic anhydride, glacial, sorry, the glacial acetic acid? Why do we use the anhydrous form of acetic acid? I think I, if you still remember ester experiment, Okay, you will see. Water is actually being formed, okay, but it turned into hydroxide from this alkoxide attack. So did I say, did I tell you the hydroxide is the catalyst here? Yes, because it consume, it gets consumed first, but it gets regenerated right here. Okay, if you don't believe it, I'm showing you right here in the next intermediate species. You see the hydroxide? It is actually coming from this alkoxide attack onto water. Okay, all right. Let's get the accounting sheet clear by looking at this alkoxide species, okay? Do you, this, do you see this carbonuber? Okay, in place, no problem. And I see this alcohol created as one of the intermediate. Yes, I can tell you this mechanism has been studied for by well, how many decades now? Okay, we come up with this mechanism scheme 
not because we we uh, because someone's in good mood and write it this way. No, it is all because we found the intermediate characterized according to this reaction scheme. Okay, we can find scientific evidence showing you that alcohol is actually being generated in the middle part of the reaction. So far, so good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so you get it. I have an alcohol here, OH group. I have another alpha hydrogen here. Woohoo! Do you think this hydroxide would just stand there without touching it forever? No. They want to form what? They want, they want to form a product, what do you call that again? Water, thank you very much. Yes, they fall in love right away, okay? Yes, did you say you have another alpha hydrogen? Yes, then I will show interest, okay? I will take you away and I'll create water. All right, all right. All right, students. Let's keep the accounting sheet clean and straightforward to everybody. Start from the beginning. Did you create water? Yes. And this water gets consumed. Yeah, because my alkoxide attacked me right away. Okay. All right. No sweat. Go ahead to attack me. I become catalyst. I get regenerated again. I um, come back alive. I have nine life. I'm like a cat, okay? All right. I, I come back alive and I can attack another alpha hydrogen because you still have another alpha hydrogen here on the original alpha carbon. <laughs> My goodness. Fatal attraction right here. Okay. You killed me there, but I will be produced one more time. All right. So. I want all of you to remember, okay? If you have one alpha hydrogen, then you produce one molecule of water. If you have two alpha hydrogen, okay, let's say one side has, okay, this methyl group. If I give you another methyl group here on the reactant, hello, hello, are you here? Are you here with me? If I give you a methyl group here, but I, if I give you another methyl group here, is that another alpha hydrogen? Yeah, then you will produce two molecules of water. Okay, you get it? Is this important? It is super, 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 super important because I want you to write your balance equation this way. Okay, because in the lab procedure, the lab manual we are using. You will be using acetone, okay? So you have two equivalents of alpha hydrogen, okay? Both sides will give you water molecule. Do you hear me? Yes and yes? Okay, thank you. So what do you call the hydroxide again? It's a... Uh, Cat, okay, it, it creates water, it gets regenerated, and it creates water again, and guess what? At the end, it gets recreated again. And if you don't believe it, follow me, okay? This water molecule is formed. Fatal attraction, okay? Water taken away. Are you following my arrow? Right here, water. They fall in love with each other. Hydroxide forms water with this alpha hydrogen again, okay? The pair of electron moves back, okay? And you bounce that pi bond to the oxygen, okay? And later on, you see this double bond, okay? Later on, the, you will find Another big driving force, another big driving force. 
they are in resonance with each other. And do you see a small triangle right here? Everybody, where is that triangle? Heat, thank you. I wanna give Cindy one point. Cindy, good job. That means heat. In the presence of heat, or if you leave it at room temperature long enough, okay, a couple hours, guess what? The double bond will be created, okay? The reaction will not stop and give you a alcohol. No, no, no. It will proceed, okay? Especially in the presence of heat. Okay, from the room, from the lab. Oh, oh, maybe it's summer day, yeah. Afternoon, summer day. Yes, that kind of heat is good enough to produce the double bond in between because this hydrogen abstraction will occur and then move the double bond this way. I have a good resonance structure. So between this alpha hydrogen and alpha carbon and then the other a couple new containing molecule. Remember, these are the two reactants I want for the aldo condensation. Okay, you will see that oxygen is actually taken away in the formation of water. That water is disappearing. And at the same time, the hydroxide is being recreated. Okay, you form water, you form a water right here. Is this your byproduct? In the reaction, the answer is yes. Okay? Because this water does not go anywhere. It doesn't get consumed anymore. Okay? This water is actually being created as a AM product. As an AM product. So let me tell you, okay. If I have one alpha hydrogen, I can create one molecule of water here. If I have another alpha hydrogen here, I can create another water. And this is actually in the case of acetone, my goodness, you create two molecules of water. Are you all with me? Okay. All right, thank you. So someone asked me, okay, so our driving force, our resonance, Aaron, excellent, excellent. The driving force is actually uh, resonance. If you have good resonance structure in the intermediate, the reaction wanna go that way, okay? It will proceed, okay? It wants to provide the resonance structure in order to kind of release the energy somehow, okay? So the intermediate can achieve a lower energy state by forming the resonance structures. Understand? Okay? These electrons are all very, very hyper and excited, okay? If you can find another home, uh, another carbon for the uh, delocalized electron to uh, play and spend some time there, then that is called resonance, that's called delocalized electron, and that is, in a way, achieve the intermediate, intermediate at lower energy state, okay? It will help stabilize the intermediate. Understand, okay? Okay. So someone just gave me a new message. Okay, thank you. Very good, okay? Driving force here, definitely. Look at this conjugation. Okay, I have a conjugated system created at the end of the reaction, and that is my aldo product, okay? Professor on the end product does the alpha carbon on the R1 group gets attacked as well. I can tell you, yes, if you provide enough, if you provide enough reactant, they continue. Yes, they continue, definitely, okay? But the second alpha hydrogen is not as reactive as the first one, okay? Understand? Okay? 
Ah, okay. All right, so my goodness. Let's get the accounting sheet clean and balanced and straightforward. What do you call the hydroxide? Is hydroxide a reactant? The answer is no, it is just a catalyst because it gets regenerated here, okay? Now, besides the end product that has this conjugated system, I also produce a molecule of water, right? Yes, all right, thank you. So when you put two molecules, two reactants together, both have carbon new group, you will know the minute they create CC double bond, one of the oxygen's gone. Where does it go to? Into water, am I right? Because water is a byproduct. Am I right? All right, thank you. Okay, so let me tell you, this is what you need to learn today, okay? You understand the mechanism now. Let me ask you one more time. So how many molecules of water you are creating today if I give you acetone? Look again. If I have one alpha hydrogen, I can create one water. Caden, Caden, yes, thank you. Caden says two molecules. Caden, I will give you, yes, I'll give you, I'll give you bonus point. Thank you. Is this important to, to your reaction rating? Yes, okay. I want to alert you that now in order for you to answer my question here. By the way, it all depends on your last name, okay? You will get a different starting aldehyde, okay? And these aldehydes will be placed next to acetone, okay? So I ask everybody, hey, the acetone that will be used for this reaction is gonna be reagent grade. Okay, it's coming from your reagent fluid. It is not coming from the wash station, okay? I can tell you some crazy students in the past used the, <laughs> they used the wash bottle acetone. <laughs> and it's basically a, you know, pretty much very, very low class acetone. Contains so much impurity, okay? All right. All right, one more time, ladies and gentlemen. I said, write the balance equation for the aldo reaction. Okay, now you know your product already. Coming from that reaction scheme uh, mechanism, sorry, the mechanism, okay? You want to tell me what is the catalyst? You want to give me coefficient of the reactant and the product and the byproduct. Watch out for this, okay? A lot of people make mistake right here, up front. And it will screw up your theoretical yield calculation right away, okay? Watch out for this, okay? Did I give you a, a, a vaccine shot right here? Yes, this is considered vaccine shot, okay? I'm giving you advice. Watch out for this, okay? Here, want to show you the reaction rating one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time. The benzaldehyde, okay? You will use benzaldehyde today. You're not adding any more substituents on this phenyl group, okay? But you're using acetone. You're using the base, okay? And the reaction writing, aha. Uh -huh. You know, once Okay, now this alpha hydrogen can expand through carbon-carbon double bond and get the other molecule attached, forming a new aldo product. How about the other side? Go ahead and write it, okay? All right. 
in this experiment, let me talk about the procedure now, okay? Before we come back to the questions in the back, okay? The photos that I will be showing you will be benzaldehyde with some substituents, okay? And then we're using acetophenone, okay? So which one is the one giving you the alpha hydrogen? The, I will call that the starter of the reaction. It's got to be the acetophenone, right? It has alpha hydrogen, right? Yes, okay. Now this alpha hydrogen, alpha carbon, will be showing the interest later on, and we call this nucleophilic attack to this carbon. Follow me. After you lose that hydrogen, it will show the interest because I have dot dot here. It will show interest. Electron rich species showing interest to the nucleal, uh, nucleus of this carbon, which is very electron hungry. Okay, it is partially positive. So I can need create new bonds here. And at the end, I'm creating water at the same time okay and so ladies and gentlemen there is one thing that i don't like about this reaction writing and i want you to point out what this miss jane don't want to see here what's wrong with this reaction writing here i can tell you i can let go here but something here i don't like what is it Hey, bonus point. <laughs> There's no mechanism. <laughs> You're right. I don't like our group. You're right. Uh, minus, no, 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 minus hydrogen. No, 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 no. You're talking about mechanism. I'm talking about the reaction rating here. Restate the question. Okay. In this reaction rating here, there's one thing I don't like. No resonance, no, 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 no. Did you say no coefficient? Uh, no resonance, it's not balanced. Showing what? No lone pairs? No, no, no. No, uh, yeah, 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 who says the arrows? What's wrong with the arrows now, Lazo? You're so, my goodness, you have a potential. Equilibrium, Lazo. Love your answer. Lazo gets one point, okay? I want all of you to remember, okay? Look at this. Do you see this? Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. You know something? Because I want to train you as very like top notch chem chemist, okay? I really want to train you like a real chemist. Because, yes, because you have the potential, okay? I know you're heading for a medical school that. I'm showing you. Only when you pay attention to the details, you can take care of the patients to the, you know, to the level that your 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 patient will, will really want. They will trust you, they will love you. When you pay attention to the patients in details, understand? Okay? So I want you to know this is a equilibrium, two-way street, okay? So for aldo condensation, let me tell you, one of the biggest problems, although, yeah, we make double bond. Ah, huh? yeah, yeah, Miss Jean. If you're able to stop the reaction and then, you know, there's no impurity around, yes. I can tell you, you can collect that product, but that product is not going to be the same quality over time because over time, they are actually retroactive they go back and they give you that starting material. <laughs> yes, this is the biggest problem uh, with this aldo condensation, okay? If you use, 
you are a hydro, I don't know, you know, if we if we use the the reactant we selected, okay? And I can tell you there's so many, many, so many scientists trying to modify the substituents on the ring, okay, on the acute group in order to stabilize the product. Okay. They play thousand tricks in order to enhance they want to maximize the yield. Okay. All right. So are you comfortable to move forward now? Can I move forward? Yes, thank you. Okay, I want to show you the old procedure. And I want to show you the photo also, okay? So I said, hey, there's some, something I don't like here. Yeah, it's actually two-way street, okay? <laughs> yeah, all right. Now, remember I said, yeah, scientists actually play well they use a lot of the new other molecules and look at the benzaldehyde side instead of a clean benzene group here a phenyl group sorry phenyl group they add so many different things okay and in one of your reactant i i'm talking about your potassium manual okay we're not running the reaction with these, no, we use benzaldehyde, then we use uh, methyl group instead of uh, sorry, sorry, methyl group instead of a methoxy, okay? And we're using cinnamaldehyde, right? And that cinnamaldehyde also smells like cinnamon. No joke, it is. Okay, that cinnamaldehyde is the active ingredient of cinnamon. So when students run that reaction, they smell the cinnamon at the same time, okay? All right, go look up the cinnamaldehyde, okay? And I want you to see, yeah, in the old days, we asked students to run the reaction using only one side, one alpha hydrogen, okay? One side of alpha hydrogen. Then, the benzaldehyde side, we just change the group, okay? I can tell you there is a reason to do it, not only because scientists are curious, okay? They realize we can create this double bond and make a conjugated system. So they really, really, really want to extend the conjugation uh, longer and longer and longer, okay, by modifying this this phenyl group. They want to extend the conjugation, oh, and then make it a special molecule for some application, okay? All right. Okay, so now students, ladies and gentlemen, the benzaldehyde derivatives here, just look at the middle molecule right here. And it's the same here, okay, the same here. Do you see this is a conjugated benzaldehyde already? A conjugated, meaning that, hey, it is double, single, double, single, double, single, double, double. Oh, yeah. It is a conjugated system, right? Okay. And when I make this new double bond, right here, this is my newly created double bond. Okay, this is coming from my benzaldehyde. Did I extend the conjugation? Yes. And so if I, if I give you the alpha hydrogen from a already conjugated system, okay, now look at this. Is, is, is this molecule, if I put the R group as a phenyl group, like this, is this a conjugated system as well? Yes, okay. So your benzaldehyde is conjugated, okay? And now your ketone is conjugated. And you know the bond in between will be double bond. And guess what? That means this whole big molecule is so conjugated and it's a long conjugated system, am I right? Yes, okay? And we just wanna show you. By doing so, ooh, ooh molecules created this way, there is a very, very special, very, very special 
application in industry as well, okay? You may not believe it. You don't believe it, but you use it every day. You use it in many, many applications, okay? And I think in this lab manual, right here, did I tell you, I want to show you there is a special property about this molecule you're synthesizing. And we want to study it using spectropic, uh, the UV, spectros uh, UV spectroscopy, UV spectrometer. We want to run the test to characterize your end product by dissolving it into a solution. Then we can run this molecule in the UV spectrometer and then study the absorption, uh, absorb, absorbing behavior. How this molecule will absorb UV light. This will be study for your end product. And I said, this is actually one big application in the industry, okay? This compound you're making today, it will be characterized using the UV, although we don't run it, okay? But I can tell you, there are half million scientists on Earth already study the UV absorbing behavior, the UV absorbance of your end product. With the molecules so conjugated at the end, like this. Conjugated here from this arrow group, conjugated here with this phenyl group, the same, okay? Wow, huge conjugated system here. And bonus point opportunity. Bonus point opportunity. What do you think the application will be? Hello? If I tell you something about this molecule, it has a very special UV absorbance uh, and it's gonna be strange. Yeah, thank you, Nathan. I'll give Nathan one point. Yes, sunscreen, UV block, yes. We want to protect your skin, okay? We want to put such molecules in the lotion, okay? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And we also put this UV absorber in other things. I'll give you another bonus point, okay? Now, yesterday, someone offered me a great answer, so I want to, I want to, I want to see if you're able to resonate with me in terms of the industrial application, because Miss G uses it a lot, okay? I use UV absorber a lot, besides sunscreen. What else? Solar panel? No, no, no. Solar panel is a semiconductor business, okay? You really want to turn the sun energy into a circuit. That's, that is not done here. However, Nathan, you're right. Uh, a highly conjugated system sometimes make the molecule a little bit conductive. Who says, oh, 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 I see a black horse right here saying sunglasses, yes, plastic, Packaging, yes, I want to give a hey, ho ho, slow down, okay? You guys are too fast. Who says sunglasses? Megan. Thank you, Megan. That's a good answer, okay? Sunglasses, you can actually, nowadays we use tint to block the UV because that tint also have a lot of conjugated system, okay? And the plastic packaging, yes, it is possible, Amanda. Amanda, very good. I can tell you it is not packaging. How about coding? Okay. 
And I can tell you, uh, in the paint, the formulation of paint, in the formulation of top coat, okay, for example, for the car, okay, people coat on the metal, okay, uh, you know, car is made of the steel or iron or whatever, okay, and we coat it. And the coating is gonna stand the sun, the UV light, and I tell you what, yeah, on the top coat, uh, my friend at GM told me how many layers of coating they actually apply to the automobile. Actually, total of 15 to 17 layers. Okay, and a lot of the layers on the outer range, outer outer uh, part of the coating, they use UV block too. Okay, in order to protect the paint color underneath. Okay, so it's a lot, a lot of application, okay? They may not be coming from benzaldehyde or acetophenone, okay? But this, these are the building block of the sunblock, okay? Misting use a lot of sun, sunblock, even in the application I call a thomic lens, okay? A thomic lens, meaning the prescription lens, or we call glasses people are wearing, okay, to correct your vision, okay? And that lens also will have to be put in the UV spectrometer to see if it actually screens some of the harmful UV light, understand? Okay, and I told my students, this is real. Ms. Jean has two uh, patents in the, in the lens formulation when I work for 3M. This is right after I, you know, I work for BP first, then I joined 3M because 3M and BP had a joint project and they want to formulate a very lightweight lens, a thomic lens, okay, like the glasses, but it's made out of plastic. They want that, that lens super thin, and they know I'm very familiar with BP's raw materials. They, they want me to come up with the lens, lens resin, lens plastic formulation in order to decrease the weight, decrease the thickness of the lens. Okay? It's actually, uh, and I, uh, my, my product at that time, it was uh, 20 years, uh, 20, yeah, 20, 25 to 20 years ago, it was in the market under the trade name Kodak, okay? That was my product, okay? This is real, it's actually amazing. I really enjoy my industry uh, experience, okay? Uh, it's a lot, of, uh, a lot of fun. So, okay, so the carbon-carbon formation, okay? this new molecule formation, you would never know. It really, really improve the life of, uh, for human being, okay? And I hope you enjoy organic chemistry from the other angle, okay? We're actually trying to improve human life, okay? All right, all right, now let's go back to uh, the experiment now, okay? We're using three different kind of benzaldehyde, okay? And look at this, okay? I call this pepperoni. Yeah. Pepperon, pepperoni, pepperoni aldehyde, okay, all right. And then the anisole, okay, that's oxy. And then the nitro, okay? They changed this in nor to yes, to see if there is any unique uh, feature with this substituent modification, okay? And the procedure is really, really straightforward, okay? All you have to do, okay, now, Ms. Jean will open up the photos now, okay? All right, solution. Okay, put the, put the ingredients together, okay? Here we use acetone according to my old procedure and you guys were using acetone, okay? And then you changed, you, you modified the type of uh, benzaldehyde here, okay? Okay, and so depending on the type of the benzaldehyde you choose, you can, my goodness, in the first five minutes, you'll be able to see this change. 
from a solution, okay, to this. Like pineapple paste, yeah. And to this. Now this brick color, the brick, uh, the brick polar, uh, color solution is actually coming from the nitro substituents on the benzaldehyde, okay? Yeah, in the first five minutes we'll see this, okay? And then if you want, heat up a little bit, okay? After you combine sodium hydroxide solution, blah, 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 swirl. <laughs> yes, then you can, you can find, yeah, after you let the reaction run five, 10 minutes, you will see the color change even more, okay? And then go ahead, you can collect your product on the vacuum filtration. It is so simple, right? It's so simple. This reaction is very straightforward. It is a theory we want you to learn. That reaction and the mechanism plus the UV spectrometer, okay, these are new to you. And we want to emphasize your understanding from what you learned from the lecture, okay? Look at this, okay? Crew product. If it has a nitro group, okay, it gives you this beautiful peachy color, okay? And then the others are more yellow or white, okay? Like this, it's more yellow or more white. That means that it's off white, depending on your starting benzaldehyde, okay? Then you recrystallize it using 95% ethanol. Now tell me, ladies and gentlemen, can someone offer me procedure? Oh, no. no, 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 no. Wait a minute, because we are supposed to run a solubility test without telling you 95% is what we recommend to students. Can someone tell me? What are you supposed to choose right here? If we give you solvent type, five solvent type in order for you to determine what is a good solvent for recrystallization. All right, tell me who can offer some tip here. How do you choose the right solvent for recrystallization? I'll give you one, one minute, okay? Water. Okay, let me see who's got some suggestion here. Does it smell like pepperoni? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Let me see who offered the answer, okay? Less polar? No, no, no. There is a special instruction. I like Aaron's answer. Very, very good. Solid at room temperature, dissolve. Okay. So Aaron says, suggests that your outer product stay as a solid, meaning that it does not dissolve at room temperature. And the same solvent will dissolve the solid at boiling temperature. Yes, that is the right solvent you want for recrystallization. You don't want you don't want a powerful solvent that will chew up the solid at room temperature. Okay? Erin gets one point because she was quickest, okay? Offering this great answer. Yes, you don't want a powerful solvent. You want a very mediocre, okay? 
it does not dissolve at room temp, but it will dissolve your solid completely at boiling temperature. And then when you cool down, yes, when you cool down, you will see the pure crystal form. Okay, very good. Aaron gets one point. Okay, so let me tell you, this, uh, this table right here, I have already uploaded the raw data, the raw data from the past, okay? I want you to record that here and you tell me what is your recommendation for recrystallization, okay? Okay, all right, so let me go back to this. Let me go back to this photo. Let me see if I can show you anything else, okay? So at the end, look at this. We're able to get all three crystals in off-white. Yeah, although the starting point, the intermediate or the crude gave you so much color, okay? The end product was only off-white or near white, okay? This is after you cool it down and we collect the crystal. Even the nitro substituents gave you the white. Remember it was really brick orangey color? Yeah, it was like this. Okay, now this is from the mesoxy substituents and this is the straight, uh, well, sorry, this is the pepperoni. All right, interesting, huh? All three give you almost off-white. Okay, lovely. Are you impressed? Okay, I want to keep going and I want to show you this, okay? So reaction writing, I think you want to handle it yourself, okay? I will upload the recording if you, yeah. And I can tell you, your professor uh, from the lecture may also provide some important good slides for you to, dis to determine what co coefficient you want for each reactant, okay? You want to show me the byproduct, okay? Watch out, there are two points here. That means a lot of people actually make mistake, okay? Mechanism wise, yes, I've shown you that. And I think any textbook also offer that, okay? Here, table of result, you can, you can just tell me this is zero, 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 but I want you to look up melting point of the aldo product you're assigned to do, okay? And I can care less about other, okay? Look at this limiting region of this experiment. All right, okay. I want you to check your lab procedure from Padia's book, from your lab manual, and determine the limiting region for me, okay? Don't say this is important. It, it's one point here. You never know. This may be another question in the final, okay? I emphasize stoichiometry a lot because in chemistry class, you really have to watch out more moles, okay? You have to know how to calculate moles and determine limiting region, okay? The theoretical yield can be predicted once you know the limiting regions, okay? Some people say, hey, because we don't do it, so I don't need to do this. Who says that, okay? You will run the reaction as if you will go by the amount selected from the book. Okay, all right. Before we resume our lecture next week, I also want you to work on this question. How many peaks do you expect to see if you run your own auto product with the C13 NMR? I'm asking you how many different kind of a carbons you will have in your end product, okay? And this is for you to check my raw data on Beachboard. You want to select the right answer, okay? And this is for you to continue practice 
Can you give me all the product from here? And once you get that product, and uh, I want to run a reaction using sodium borohydride. Have you seen this reaction before? Benjamin, tell me where, where, what is the application of sodium borohydride? What's the use for it? Hey, bonus point. No way. Drying? Drying agent? Reducing. Now, who says reducing? Reducing agent. Amanda gets one point. Amanda, you're right. It is reducing agent, okay? I want you to look up, okay, what kind of functional group will this reducing agent attack? Don't forget, okay, your product will look very similar to this. I shouldn't be telling you, okay. Now, which, what, 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 which group does it reduce, okay? Does it go to the ring? Does it go here to the single bond? Does it go to this double bond? Does it go to this carbon? Does it go to this oxygen? You decide, okay? I don't want to tell you, okay? I don't want to tell you, okay? All right. Also, there is a question right here, okay, before we, before we meet again next week, okay? I will ask you at what range in PPM? Is this carbon peak? Oh, oh, first question is I have, I, I give you this molecule. This is coming from a aldo condensation reaction, okay? You see the C2 double bond, you, you, you know, and this is my benzaldehyde, oh, of course, okay? And therefore, on this molecule, I'm asking you, there is a carbon that is most deshielded. Most deshielded. Oh, you learned that term before, have you? Okay. Tell me which carbon. You don't have to tell me now. Okay. You will do your own homework first. Okay. And I will take questions next time. I'll give you a hint, okay? You know we have day two also. For this experiment, there is a day two, okay? Thank you. The shielded means naked, yes. <laughs> so which carbon is most naked, okay? I don't want to tell you. You can look it up, okay? It's actually available on, and well, you can Google it. <laughs> okay, the answer is very obvious, okay? All right, and then I ask you, this carbon peak coming from this part, if it is most deshielded and most naked, what range of PVM will, will you see this carbon peak? Okay, go ahead, look it up, okay? We want you to learn a little bit of carbon-13 NMR here. It go by the same theory exactly the same trend you will see, like hydrogen NMR, the C13 NMR will go by the same theory, okay? It's the same trend you will see, okay? All right, and so am I done for today? I can tell you in terms of the algal condensation itself, yes, the reaction itself, I think I can stop here, but I'm not done yet, okay? Next time, I will spend the time on the UV behavior, UV spectrometer, UV spectroscopy. The behavior, I already made the slides, okay? I just wanna show you, how about this?
How about this? How about another one, another example? Okay, I just want to show you. Hello, if I give you a molecule and then you dissolve a, that compound in a, a appropriate solvent for UV spectroscopy, we usually use ethanol because ethanol will not pick up any signals in the UV range. So, okay, right here. A molecule like this, do you see a conjugated system right here? Okay. I'm going to dissolve it in ethanol and then I run it in the UV spectrometer and UV spectrometer will give me photons between 200 to 400. Sometimes uh -huh, this UV spectrometer is capable of gi giving me the visible light. That visible light is between 400 to 700 nanometer. Okay, so this is my UV range, 200 to 400. This is the ultraviolet. And beyond 400 is visible light. Okay, so in order to protect your eyes, hello, from UV, if you want to protect your eyes, go ahead. Okay, take the UV spectroscopy run a test to see if the absorbance is here between 200 and 400. Are you with me? Okay, so the x-axis you see the wavelength and then in the y-axis you see the absorbance, okay? It means, wow, this molecule is capable of absorbing around hey, about, hey, about 390, hey, 395. It will give you a peak. Oh, okay, so that means at 395 nanometer, this molecule will remove the harmful effect to some extent, am I right? <laughs> yeah, it will block the photons from coming into your eyes. Yes, okay? So this is the application for it, okay? And I'll talk about that next time. Okay, it has a little bit of theory, so I want to save it until next time, okay? And for today, okay, I just want to give you, yeah, some appetizer amount, UV behavior of a molecule, okay? They're all very unique, okay? Look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see this molecule in pink? Wow, the UV absorbance, UV behavior, absorbing behavior. It's the pink line. The green and then the blue, okay. The more conjugation, ah, you see the peak is actually trending it to the right-hand side, right? That is the longer wavelength, right? Okay, I'll talk about this next time, okay? So for now, are you able to digest a little bit outdoor condensation? Yes, I hope you enjoy it, okay? We try very hard. And luckily I have some reaction um, from the lab taken from the procedures and we show you some examples. Although it is not the perfect match to uh, what we're doing here. It's close enough, okay? And so next week, I'll continue day two, okay? Before we see each other on the Zoom, I want all of you to do some of the question, okay? Really? Okay, let me see. Oh, okay. Let me change it to number 38. Okay. Okay. I want you to do some of the questions here and I will take question next time. Okay. All right. Will you be posting this recording? Yes, I do. I will. I will. And it's on the YouTube. You know that, right? I have been doing that for the past how many, yeah, how many lectures now? 
okay? And please ask good questions too, okay? You don't have to be a good answer provider, but a lot of times if you ask a question, I still give you points, okay? I really want to encourage students to make effort, okay? Thank you, everyone. Before I say goodbye, is there any other question? All right. I'll see you next week. Okay. Bye bye.